Oh, God. Um, sorry, I always do talks like this, but in front of a camera and not in front of those people, so bear with me. Okay, so in 2021, um, I was arrested at the Sarah Everard vigil, and a picture of me was on the front page of every UK news media outlet. Um, it went worldwide, it was even on the New York Times. But before that, I was studying physics at Royal Holloway. Um, I love physics, and most people think physics is boring, but it's about space and quantum physics and really fun things. When I was studying, we had a women in physics group, and some of the guys in our course would say, well, why isn't there a men in physics group? Now, we already know that STEM subjects such as physics are a male-dominated field. So less than 30% of scientific researchers worldwide are female. And when we look at AI, that drops down to about 22%. From a young age, I really enjoyed languages as well. And when I went to university, I was introduced to coding um, and computer science. Now, I say about languages because coding is the language of computers. It's really interesting. Um, so raise your hand if you've heard of ChatGPT. That's a lot of people. Okay, I was expecting a lot, but there's a lot, a lot of people. Okay, cool. So for those who don't know, ChatGPT is an AI chatbot. It's the name chat in the name. AI stands for artificial intelligence, of course. But it's quickly advancing at the moment. That's why a lot of people have heard of it. So we've got things like Canva and Photoshop that are allowing people to edit photos very quickly by scribbling out a piece of a, an image and then typing in a few descriptive words in a text box and that will edit the image very quickly. Um, ChatGPT can also do your homework for you. Um, you can ask it for marketing advice and it has even passed the bar, which is a test that a lot of um, potential lawyers do. It's really hard to pass. So AI is wonderful, we know it is. Um, but a couple of years ago, someone called Eugenia Kuda um, had a friend who passed away. And she created a chatbot out of old text messages from that friend. Um, she called that chatbot Replica. Now, Replica was designed to comfort and lessen loneliness. Um, you know, you can create a character and you can talk to it, and it learns from your input, basically. Now, um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, obviously everyone was told to stay indoors and not talk to their loved ones, not even meet new people. So replica users skyrocketed. Um, a lot of people were using it for not its intended purpose. So unfortunately, um, it was used to create AI girlfriends that were being abused. Now, the Reddit posts about this are really hard to read. Um, some ask how far you can take the abuse before she fights back. Others explain in explicit detail how they emotionally manipulated and sexually abused these AI girlfriends. Now, AI isn't real. But the AI, although cannot, as far as we know, be adversely affected by this abuse, because it doesn't have consciousness and isn't sentient, when the AI is tolerant of this abuse or becomes submissive, as one Reddit user says, the user could see this as a green light to try on real human women. And later on, I'll show the pyramid of abuse, showing how misogynistic acts can lead to real-world violence. AI has also been used... Oh, actually. Replica has actually started harassing its users. So, at the moment, Replica has used the input it's got by its users and learned from that and become abusive, being called a sexual, sexual harasser by many. Um, unfortunately, even when something has no sentience but acts in a female form, it's still blamed for the work of men. So, AI has been used for deepfakes. I'm hoping most of you know what deepfakes are, but if you don't, it means that um, usually a person's face or body is edited, and most people use this for celebrity deepfakes. Some are using it in a sexually explicit way, and these are non-consensual a lot of the time. Um, the most recent TikTok trend um, of a baby, um, usually, uh, using its foot as a phone. So it will type in a number and then the, the parent will usually raise its leg to put its, uh, its foot to its ear. It's being used with deepfakes. 
And I'm not going to tell you how, but I'm sure you can understand how that is very dangerous. It's why we ask people not to place their children online. So when we think about the protection of women and girls online, we would like to think that there is some <laughs> regulation around how online harassment is handled. Um, unfortunately, a third of women experience online harassment. When asked if online harassment is a major problem, 83% of women aged 18 to, 19, uh, to 29 think that it is, but only 55% of men in the same age bracket think it is. So women have also reported sexual assault in the metaverse. Now, there's several stories linked to the metaverse. Um, one was where someone was assaulted in a private room whilst another user watched and drank vodka. Another one had her avatar groped and several others have experienced verbal sexual harassment. Now, although again, this is in a virtual reality, so it's not technically real, but when you are fully immersed in that virtual reality, those experiences can be very violating. So if someone sends you an explicit picture online, for example, that is still a very violating experience. It should be treated as such and be as serious as a real life interaction. And the thing is that those men in the metaverse intended to scare and violate those women. So I'm going to stop talking about sexual assault now and start talking about cake, which is a very weird U-turn, I'm afraid. But basically, I use analogies in all my life um, discussions because a lot of people don't understand what I'm talking about when I talk about AI. I'm sure a lot of you people do, but when I'm talking to family members, especially of the older generation, some of them don't understand AI, so that's perfectly fine. But I use cake as an analogy a lot of the time. So my analogy today is that, for example, if someone had to make a cake and everyone in the world has to have a slice of this cake, so the guy chooses to make the cake with flour and sugar and eggs and he's going to decide it's a chocolate cake, much like this one. Um, and he hands it out to everyone in the world and they all take a slice, but unfortunately some people have allergies. Some people have nut allergies, some people are da dairy intolerant or gluten intolerant, and some people are even allergic to chocolate. Now, people who don't have allergies don't usually think about allergies, especially when they're making food. People who do have allergies do think about how to alter some ingredients to make sure that everyone can eat that cake. We can see the same thing happen in AI. So when we have creators of AI, they're making something for the majority of the world to enjoy and help progress the human experience. If someone who has never experienced sexual harassment, assault, verbal online abuse is creating that tool, they won't know or maybe won't care enough to put things in place to stop that kind of behaviour. Now, I'm not stating that men don't go through that. But when we look at the statistics, 91% of all victims um, of sexual assault are women, and only 9% are men. So when I mentioned Replica earlier, um, the creator of Replica is a woman. However, when she found out that, um, that Replica was being used in a way that was not intended, um, she immediately got rid of the a feature that allows you to have a sexual relationship with that AI. But when we look at the metaverse, or anything produced by Mark Zuckerberg, um, they unfortunately, they have put something in place where you can, you have a certain boundary with other users, but you can still make very violent comments, you can make sexually explicit comments, and you can even simulate ejaculation at other users. I'm sure many of you can understand why that's not okay. Of course, you can report these things, but if anyone has any other experience dealing with things that Mark Zuckerberg has created, unfortunately, that will probably just be rejected. So, there is Mark Zuckerberg. Um, okay. So what I'm saying is that men often don't take these things as seriously as women do. As women, we know that male violence against women and girls is a serious topic. It causes two women a week to be killed by a current or former partner in England and Wales. Got the pyramid here as well. So, I mean, it's got everything on the pyramid, but it just shows you how 
catcalling and misogynistic comments can eventually go up the pyramid and lead to violence and sexual assault. People don't often see this connection, but it is there, and this is based on real evidence. So we also need to recognise that this is the behaviour of men in fields of science that allows for it to remain male-dominated. So it baffles me when, you know, football, I'm sure a lot of men know about football, and when men do know about football, they research the players and the teams and how much the players cost and everything about the teams. But when it comes to equality, they can't do a Google search. So when women say they're going to the Women in Physics meeting, you need to understand that it's because of the question from men, why don't we have a men in physics group, that we have a women in physics group. Oh God, I'm gonna go back to cake, okay. So if we use the cake analogy again, so one of the allergies that I said was nut allergy. So it, it, let's say that the nut allergy is sexism. Another al an allergy would be racism, and another one would be ableism, another one would be classism, homophobia, transphobia. So it's important for everyone to recognise our privileges and not hinder diversity in the fields of science. Um, we've had to remove the pictures <laughs> for legal reasons, but some of the amazing women in AI um, at the moment are really trying to make a difference, and I'm hoping that more women will be able to not only retain their stance in these fields, but also rise to the top and create something amazing. Ada Lovelace was often referred to as the first programmer. She wrote the first published description of a stepwise sequence of operations for solving certain mathematical problems to do with computers, and the first to express the potential of computers outside mathematics. So we need more women in STEM and AI. Thank you.